Today on the podcast, we have Justin Haynes. He's served 29 years in the United States Army, and he's here today to talk about transitioning his personal and professional life to Idaho after the military. Let's get after it. Welcome to the Mission 43 podcast, a podcast dedicated to discussing the struggles and triumphs of transitioning to life after the military. I'm Dan Nelson. I'm a former Army Special Forces officer who's personally experienced the challenges of transitioning to civilian life. In every episode, we'll be sharing tips, strategies, and real-life stories of veterans and their families who've chosen Idaho for their life after the military. So join us, and let's start the conversation. Justin Haynes, thanks for being here, man. I appreciate the invitation. It's always great to be out here with you guys. Uh, well, you've been out here quite a bit. I mean, uh, I don't know if Idaho is your original home. Are you a native Idahoan? So uh, at the risk of identifying that I'm not a native na- <laughs> Idahoan, uh, I've been coming out to Idaho since about 11 years old. Yeah, early 80s, uh, originally grew up on the East Coast. The f- first experience out here, uh, my mother and my brother and I did a whitewater rafting trip down the, the Frank Church, or Middle Fork of the Salmon oh, River yeah. in the Frank Church. Uh, spent the next two years up in the Chamberlain Basin working on a ranch, and then uh, my family started a business up in Valley County as an outfitter and guide service. And uh, while I still went to school on the East Coast, every waking moment uh, wasn't in school out there. I was out here running around the mountains. Right. So, and it's been a while since you've actually been able to live out here full time because you've been in the Army since Moby Dick was a minnow, right? Yeah. So coming June, it'll be 20, 29 years. 29 yeah. Years. I was commissioned in 1995 from Washington State University. Go Cougs. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's been an awesome, awesome adventure. So you a career intelligence officer? Is that how you started the entire time? Yeah, I'm a, a career military intelligence officer. Uh, probably a three-way split in terms of my experiences. About a third of it was in, in the really in the truly tactical army. I grew up in the 82nd Airborne Division as an airborne way. airborne brigade up in Alaska and in a striker brigade there. Um, uh, the next third, operational level intelligence, uh, Korea, and you uh, know U.S. Army Intelligence Security Command at Fort Belvoir, working global operations, a variety of things that they do. And uh, the other third is really in, in U.S. Special Operations Command, where I had a uh, privilege to serve within the 160th Special Operations Aviation Regiment, the 160th SOAR, the Night Stalkers. And then uh, my final final uh, job was a brigade commander in U.S. Special Operations Command. So we we got to know you like we as in mission forty three a little bit just probably over a year ago now I guess yeah it was that was probably about two weeks after I dropped my retirement packet so I had probably still like a uh, look in my eyes like what did I just do um, and uh, the funny thing is that uh, people had always told me is like when you know it's time you, you'll know it's time and uh, a little bit over a year ago it, it basically came out I was in really the the dream job being a brigade commander working with amazing people on an amazing mission. And uh, it suddenly came down as looking really what my next assignment was going to be. I actually had a great job lined up. I was going to go up to the Defense Intelligence Agency, uh, work in their China shop up there, and I've got a, a pretty strong China background. And I suddenly realized, like, not one of my peers had ever said they did one more move. Right. Did, you know, did one more year. And uh, probably the hardest call was calling up to, to my, my future boss, who I'd worked for before, and say, you know, I just, you know, realized, hey, it's it's time. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was fortunate that he was incredibly graceful and said, hey, you know, absolutely the right call for for you at, at this time. He supports me. Um, but, you know, th- that next piece is uh, after I dropped that retirement packet, um, and I was able to do about 18 months out. Um, really kind of as you go through the transition, to kind of the emotional roller coaster started like right off the bat. Well, I was going to say, after 29 years, and I mean, you're a Fulbright colonel, you're retiring as an 06, right? So, yep. I mean, at some point, this is who you are, right? Your entire adult life has been in the service of our country. Yeah, absolutely. The, I mean, I was a kid who grew up, uh, wanted to be a paratrooper, mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, grew up reading World War II history books and things like that. Um, and, and really... You know, going through the like the next thing, the, the the I had two really probably irrational thoughts right off the bat, like the day after I, I dropped my retirement. Only two? Now. Still, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, and the first one was like, I have to get a job right now. Right. And you know, like you do the immediate your LinkedIn search, and you're like, oh my gosh, what can I do? 
And the next thing is like, I'm going to be the only person from the army who's ever retired in the state of Idaho, <laughs> in which is completely you know foolish to think that. Um, so I got on Google and I, I Googled, you know, veterans organizations in, in Idaho and Mission 43 pops up. And uh, I've always been, you know, tied into the mountains out here and there's a bunch of smiling faces. So I kind of started researching the, the organization after that. Well, you're a family man. You're an outdoorsman. So, I mean, those two things kind of align with the Idaho life in general that we're pretty proud of. But I remember when I first met you, one of the things that stuck up to me is you said, you know, this is what I'm doing now. Uh, you know, you're a brigade commander, and I'm I'm looking to work on Justin 2.0. Yeah. And I was like, huh, I've never heard it said like that. But that means two things. One, you're aware enough to realize that you're going to have to change significantly. But two, you feel that Justin 1.0 is definitely tied to your job. Yeah. Yeah. I, I realized that, you know, that looking forward you know, to what I do next – um, it really came down to three things. I want to be passionate about whatever I'm doing. I want to be with people, want to work with people that I like and where I you know, do things I, where I feel like I'm actually providing value added. And the next thing is I want to have the autonomy and agency to do things I want to do. And I didn't realize at the time that when we first met that really for the past 29 years, all three of those things had been wrapped up into my career. Yeah. And like I said, I, I mean, I love being a paratrooper. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I, you know, I was in 3rd Battalion, 5 4th Parachute Infantry Regiment, and that's the battalion in the movie, that, you know, A Bridge Too Far, mm-hmm. where Robert Redford's leading them, you know, rowing across the, the Rhine River. I'm a 2505 yeah. guy myself, just saying. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so it, it's uh, it kind of taking that approach has kind of helped me going forward, and going through the Leaders Fellowship has helped me also, you know, think through. Um, that you can have a job, a job. I mean, I can have again. I already have uh, something lined up with, with this with Turban One, in this phenomenal organization, where I, and people I, I love and, and looking forward to, to working on their mission. But I also realize that my passion and my career don't have to be the same thing. Right. And so that's kind of goes down to that third thing: agency, autonomy to do the things I want to do. I'm a brand new grandfather. Yeah. Uh, Congratulations. So, uh, so spending more time uh, with family is important. Uh, doing things that uh, I've put off for 29 years, hunting, fishing, trips with my family, just spending quality time with family. Yeah. So looking forward to getting after that. Well, I'm curious, though, because a lot of people, I mean, we all want the work-life balance um, in the military, especially in certain realms of the military like that. That's not possible, right? Like yeah. you can't exist or, or, you know, be an effective leader if you're truly i don't know i hope i'm wrong but in my experience i should say it's kind of one or the other you know something is going to give you only have so much bandwidth and if you're dedicated to the people that you're under your command for instance then probably some other things are, are lacking so i guess my question is now with this this new job um i mean as a senior leader i know how important it was to get that job but how do you even look like where does a where does an 06 start? Like, cause I know where I started and it's like all the JMO, the junior military officer type recruiting agencies and things. Is there a, is there a cool thing for like 06 and above that says like, yeah. come find this job pipeline here? Yeah, I mean, obviously there, there's a number of services out there. I mentioned Higher Heroes Corporate Fellowship Program, um, but it's different cause the, as a, as a Colonel, you'd like to think you're a soldier like everybody else. And, and, and you know, honestly the, the good leaders really are. Um, but most of the Army's programs in terms of transition assistance program and TAP, they're geared to the more junior soldiers. Yeah, TAPs, and, all that stuff, yeah. Yeah, and then you also realize that um, although in my heart I'm still a 22-year-old and, <laughs> and uh, I'm not that guy anymore, and so you also start getting self-conscious. I mean, ageism is, is a thing. Mm. And uh, you've tr- transitioned from being a direct first line leader, you know, yeah. like I was as a junior officer to now being an organizational leader. And my last job I had 800 folks at, you know, a huge budget, people around the world. And you'd like to think that those things translate uh, into something else and they do. But I also realized that that's not going to happen again. Right. And so as I started looking forward, I kept cycling back to those three things, things I'm passionate about yeah, I'm passionate about national security. I'm passionate about conservation issues and wildlife management, that sort of thing. You know, where am I going to find people I enjoy, you know, working with? Where can I make a difference that's value added? 
but also kind of where you're talking about work-life balance, where do you have that autonomy? And that's what led me to Turban One. Yeah, team of people I, I know and in there. The funny thing is one of my my former lieutenants, platoon leaders, is, is uh, one of the teammates who's helped me as I learn artificial intelligence and he, as he's an engineer. Uh, another uh, you know person on there who's really the director of strategy worked for me. And so it, it's this neat thing seeing how mentorship goes both ways. Yeah. And yeah, so people I felt very strong about mentoring them, they're now mentoring me, which is really pretty cool. So this company, Turbine One, it's yep. a small small company, right? Yeah, I think I'm the seventeenth employee. Okay, yeah. yeah. So it's a or I'm again on the fellowship, yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh well yeah, you're in skill bridging now with yeah. hopes to be employed, right? Yeah. But um so you're working or potentially working for someone that used to work for you. Yep. In the military, and that goes a long way. Like we all know, the military. I mean, it's a small army, right? Absolutely. And reputation matters, all those different things. So, that definitely helps with that connection. How did the leaders fellowship impact your decision making, if at all? Like through this past eighteen months, when you decided to make that move and drop the packet. Um, the funny thing is, going back to when you said when we first met, you were describing uh, the leaders fellowship, and I was still going a million miles an hour as a brigade commander. Uh, you know, with our mission. And I was thinking, okay, this is nice, but there, there's like, there's no way I can do this now. And mm-hmm. I, th- I think I said it in the room and I had this pause where I was like, well, who's going to tell me no? Um, so I'm like, and, and my, my wife is incredibly supportive and she said, hey, I, I really think you need to do this. Um, and just the way the fellowship is set up, uh, the point for me in transition, the each phase really lined up. Phase one, really being introspective. Um, and I was still in command at that point, about a month out uh, from finishing up. Um, so it was really the first time being able to kind of take a breath and kind of really kind of you know soul search internal. Uh, the next phase, phase two, you know, really team oriented. Yeah. Um, and yeah, now you're you're learning from your peers um, and really the diverse group is just you know incredible. And out there in the Sawtooth Mountains, where I've never been before. Um, just a great opportunity to kind of, you know, transition from where you're thinking about just yourself, like how do you operate in a team? And also your teammates are holding you accountable a little bit. Sure. Yeah, around the campfire. And then phase three right now, uh, learning from leaders who are in Idaho from different perspectives. And uh, just every one of the, the speakers is just incredible. And, and I've got a book full of notes here. And what that's really been, I'm already kind of head start and thinking through is like phase four is like, what's next? Yeah. You know, how do you continue, you know, moving forward? Um, so it, it's just been an incredible experience for me and, and it's really given me a framework to transition, um, you know, as I'm coming out of the army. I'm curious, like you, you said, and we hear this quite a bit. It's like, oddly enough, this podcast, we meet people and it's like, well, my family moved here to Idaho after we retired. We were looking at Idaho potentially comparing it to other states and we came across Mission 43's podcast or Mission 43's website. But I mean, those are just things, right? Like there's a podcast, just just website. And uh, I'll speak for myself. I kind of have like a natural distrust oftentimes where it's like, oh, hey, you want me to join this for free? Then I must be the product mm-hmm. type of thing. Like, what are you after from me? What was it that made you take the leap and to say like Mission 43 could be something worthwhile for me or your experience? Yeah, yeah well, you're right. I mean, it, I'd say Mission 43 looks too good to be true. And so the first thing is when, when I looked at it, I saw this thing on this website. I'm like, you know, smiling people up on top of the mountain. They do a bunch of uh, things I like to do, fish and hike and that yeah. sort of stuff. It's amazing. Um, but before I leaped in, I, I, I basically cold called um, some folks, um, and, uh, Tony Lyles, who's been on the podcast, he's just part episode of episode 38. Yeah. yeah. And I, I saw Tony's smiling face on the podcast. I'm like, <laughs> okay, I, I, th- I think I'll, I'll, I can reach out to this guy. And, um, I'd come out here to Boise with my wife to start looking around town for places to live. And I said, Hey Tony, can we just go grab coffee? And he wrote me in and he's like, Hey, look, you know, you, he, you want to talk about what mission 43 is meant to him. Um, and he, he'd come out of being a, a brigade sergeant major. And so, you know, we kind of had a little bit of a, a bond just sure. off of that experience. And then um, uh, some other folks I talked to and it's like, hey, I'm all in. And that's kind of one of the things I also realized is going through the transition. I'm, I'm kind of leaving one team, but here's another team that's right there. Yeah. And uh, that's really cool. Is there anything now like, 
I mean, you're come, you're going to have your retirement, yeah. right? So that's somewhat of a safety net. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, you're, you found something that could potentially be your next career, and it yeah. seems like it's something that fits your your big three priorities. Is there anything that scares you right now, like about the transition? Oh, yeah. Um, absolutely. I mean, it, it's, again, still a roller coaster and different things. You know, did I make the right choice on, you know, which company? I think it is. Uh, you know, I think the other piece, too, it's easy to think about just yourself. Uh, probably the number one lesson learned for me is the transition just isn't about you as a service member. And that's, you know, uh, it's about your family. You know, I've got a phenomenal family and kids doing great. My, my wife is a professor and, and realizing that how the transition impacts them as well. Uh, again, the Army has been pretty good to us. And, and although it's been hard. Yeah, the Army's been very good to us in terms of benefits, in terms of mm-hmm. friends and networks. That's all changing for them as well. I was going to say, who's more worried about your transition? Do you think it's your wife or your family or you? Um, it's different. I probably have had about an eight-month head start thanks to Mission 43. Mm. Um, I have more, more ties and networks out here. Um and so uh, it, it's it, sometimes it depends on the day. Yeah. Uh, there's also a lot of excitement to it. My, I've got my my middle son out here. He's looking for jobs. You know, we're looking forward to going to the Steelheads hockey game next oh, week. Yeah. Going ice fishing up there in Cascade. Yep. So, um, you know, if there's one thing the Army has also taught us over the years is that with every change, there's opportunity. Mm-hmm. And, uh, again, leaders succeed by taking those opportunities and and going forward. What speaking of leadership, like you have, it's a common thing. We had it. We've had everyone from. I mean, obviously, a, a whole grip of amazing military spouses that have never actually worn a uniform in our leaders' fellowship. We've also had anywhere from an O seven, so you know, a general officer to an E two. Yeah. I think is the lowest ranking person we've had in it. So rank doesn't really matter that much. But I, I do find sometimes that we run into people whether they're an E seven or an O three or an O six. That are like, well, I've already achieved leadership. You know what I mean? Like, what what can the leadership leaders fellowship or mission forty three offer me? Because I obviously have been anointed as a leader. Your brigade commander, Tony Lyles, who you mentioned, he was brigade sergeant major. Like, you know, I, I guess my question is like, what do you think we can teach you about leadership? Well, I, I think yeah. One is completely different environment, yeah. and uh, you know one of the responsibilities when you're a leader is just continue to learn, and that's one of the excitement, you know, exciting good parts leaders. about it is, <laughs> is there's always, someone's always throwing a gauntlet down, whether it's someone's throwing a gauntlet down in front of you, you know, for a challenge or you do it for yourself. Um, again, this is a different environment, and I think again going back to phase two, one of the best things about you know the moments up there in the mountains is you said there is no rank um and i look forward to that if anything probably the best thing uh, that has happened to me with the leaders fellowship is that as brigade commander you get a parking spot you walk into the room people stand up everybody laughs at your jokes when you're up there in the mountains with spouses and you know you know or you know veterans you know they don't care about that and and nor do i want that because if anything that's how they're helping you move forward and they're also holding your, you accountable as well and you know, this conversation you have around the campfire and you'll say something and you're like well you know hey look from my perspective and the diversity of perspectives uh, within leadership perspective uh, leaders fellowship is, is so important um, I think one of the things I cherish the most is are the spouses are in there because yeah. it's so easy for us in uniform people thank us for our service at the airports and all that sort of stuff and um, but what the spouses do, maintaining careers, uh, raising kids, and, you know, all the while while we're gone. I mean, example. All the easy stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and uh, I mean, my last tour in Afghanistan, my wife was finishing up her doctorate. The same year, it was uh, my son's senior year in high school. And, oh, by the way, we had no idea where we were going to live when we came back. Yeah. And, and so what they do is just incredible. Yeah. It's funny you say that because I, I have a policy with the Mission 43. The Mission 43 team has to stand and clap every time I walk into a room, and they're required <laughs> to laugh at all my jokes. But everyone has yeah. a different style. You're you know? failing right now. So yeah, okay. my ty- my tyrant yeah. leadership style. Yeah. But um, I, you're obviously in a family of, of high performers, and you've been able to achieve quite a bit, both you and your wife, your family in general. 
is there anything is there a fear i guess of like not being able to have those actual concrete peaks that exist in you know the military system you know there's no rank to achieve out here there's no I mean, there's salaries, but oftentimes people don't know what everyone else makes. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, what is it besides CEO or a title like that? Um, is is that a fear at all? And that, I'm not saying that you have an ego that would make that happen. I'm just saying it's natural for everyone to say, like, you know, I feel like I've been accomplished X, Y, and Z. Now that I'm out here, what is there to accomplish? Yeah, um, I think it goes back to what, what your really goals are. I, I didn't end up as a brigade commander yeah, because I went, as a second lieutenant, I said, oh, I want to be a brigade commander. I yeah. wanted to, you know, as a second lieutenant Haynes, wanted to be nowhere near the colonel. Um, and uh, I was fortunate to end up in the position I was. Uh, one, because I had some great mentors, I was surrounded by great people. And, you know, I, I think I ended up in those jobs because I just wanted to do that job. It wasn't necessarily about the next thing. Um Although one thing I'll say about the Army, I mean, especially on the officer side of the house, the Army, you know, lays out a ladder and, you know, they continue to train you to get to that next rung. Mm-hmm. And at, at, that's, at some point that rung, you know, there's no longer a next rung. And I think it goes back to how do you set your goals? And um, that's where I kind of circle back to those three things, you know, things I'm passionate yeah. about. Um, I would put off a lot of stuff that I really loved, you know, hunting and fishing and stuff like that. Um, 2020, uh, the year of the pandemic, yeah, that was the first time I'd gone elk hunting with my brother in about 25 years. Wow. And that was a phenomenal experience. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, last year I was able to, to come up here and bring my, my oldest son up here and go elk hunting with him. And realizing you can never make up the time you've lost, um, whether it be deployments, training, or just time away from your family. But what we've got to do is just focus on putting your best foot forward the next every next day forward. Um and um, I think that's really the challenge is, you know, again, I'm fortunate I've, I've, I've got a great fellowship, uh, you know, working out here with Turbine One um, and excited about working with them. But I also have other goals, too. Yeah. Um, you know, again, being a grandfather, that's a whole new experience. Um, you know, my, my one of the reasons I'm showing up at the field house to go work out is because I want to. You know, my my grandson would be like, man, old man, he's, he's still got it. He's still got up mountains, <laughs> you, you know, and I'm taking a fishing and that sort of thing. So it's changing your perspective a little bit. Yeah. Is there anything that you're most looking forward to personally, I guess? Like, I know you mentioned, like, the freedom. You don't have to ask anybody to go on vacation anymore, pretty much. Yeah. Um, but is there any th- one thing about coming back to Idaho that you're most looking forward to? I think, especially with Boise, the ability to have all the the best things about a city, yet yeah, being close to the mountains, and uh, I, mean, I can walk from my new house down to the Boise River and go fly fishing. Yeah. Um, you know, already tied in with a great community of people um, yeah, here with Mission 43 and veterans. Um, I think one of the reasons why I first went in the military in the first place was because there's a sense of adventure Mm -hmm. and so this is like the next adventure going forward and whether it's you know learning new city learning new community community and making a difference in that community but also doing the things i enjoy and love and and you know helping out with my family with that i think that's what i'm really looking forward to i mean i definitely respect that that drive for adventure um i think we share that in common uh i do think for at times it seems harder to find out here quote unquote, um, than it is in the military. But then other times, like you said, the freedom, it really is what you make of it. And I think that's probably a a pigeonhole factor that some people like me sometimes get in our mind. I'm curious, what about Mission 43 has been the most attractive thing, I guess, like for you and your experience so far, like you talked about how it started and making cold calls. First of all, that takes a lot of courage even to do that. I think a lot of people... Well, I don't have the courage to do that oftentimes, but what is it that, that has been the most beneficial thing to you? I, I think it's a sense of community. Um, and like I said, one of the, the second irrational thought I had as soon as I dropped my retirement packet was, oh my gosh, I'm going to be the only person. And all of a sudden, again, in our meeting here you know, with, with, with Brian, you know, he and I both served in, in the 160th. And all of a sudden it's like, okay, we know a million, million of the same people. Yeah. Um, and then through the Leaders Fellowship, uh, you, you, you know, meet other people and you all of a sudden you have this, this common bond. 
Yeah, this morning working out, met a Washington State University grad. There you, you know, go. We did, we did the Go Kooks fit and fist pump. So <laughs> to me, that that's incredibly important. And you look at, you know, the things veterans go through in the transition, loss of sense of purpose, the sense of community. It's like, I mean, sense of community is here. Yeah, I think we mentioned before, yeah, right now, this is the two-year anniversary, you know, of you know one of my you know closest mentors um he died by suicide he re- had retired as a two-star and uh, i can't speculate you know the reasons why and that sort of thing but that really made me think about hey how do i focus on transition from a wellness perspective and mission 43 has been a big part of that yeah uh, whether it be the physical aspect of it the community um, looking forward to the next thing in terms of, again, ice fishing next week, mm. um, those sorts of things. So to me, those are incredibly important. And uh, Mission 43 is a gift. Um, and going back to what you said earlier is a, um, you know, looks too good to be true in the outside. No, it's it's true. So I'm incredibly grateful to the, the Scott family and, and Jay Calf for what they're doing for veterans. Well, I think I am too. Um I'm curious you brought it up about the friend that you lost. I mean, it is such a scary thing, and obviously we hear the numbers thrown out all the time, and who knows about the validity of of those necessarily. But the bottom line is we do obviously have a widespread issue with veterans giving up on life in a lot of different ways, whether it's suicide or otherwise, Um, addiction, all those different things that seem to be systemic. And is there any advice that you'd give, and does it differ between a, a junior enlisted soldier, a, a junior officer, senior officer, anywhere in between, or a military spouse? Like, what advice do you have for all of those groups as they're thinking about transitioning or having recently transitioned? Um, I'd say one thing, you, know, you mentioned courage earlier. It uh, You have to have you know, courage to reach out if, if you yourself are, are struggling. Um, but also as an individual, if you see somebody else who you think might be struggling, reaching out to them and, um, that network, again, coming out here, you know, I'm, I'm leaving behind a, a great network you yeah. know, through my military career. And all of a sudden I've got people where, you know, as I'm going through a job search last fall, I'm going to pick up the phone and call somebody in, in the leadership fellowship. And they're going to be like, you know, talk you down as your heart palpitations are going. And it's like, Hey, look, it's, it's going to work out. Um, but, uh, you know, we're coming from the generation where the Army was you know, like, hey, you know, if something's wrong, you take some motion, drink water, and you drive yeah. on. Um, we've so focused on physical fitness over the years, we've we've lost the bubble on wellness. Hmm. And, um, you know, all those things that go into holistic health. I think the Army's getting better at it. Um, the H2F program is, I think, is on track. Mm-hmm. Um, I wish we had that years ago. Sure. Um Again, I, I'm definitely not an expert on, on veteran suicide and that sort of thing. Uh, but I think for me, you know, connectiveness, you know, sense of purpose and community, it, you know, goes so far. Yeah. yeah. What is it do you think that uh, you hope to do? Maybe outside of just the all the outdoors things that you enjoy, being a grandfather that you enjoy, mm-hmm. now this career. But, like, do you have political aspirations? Are oh, you, no. Planning oh, yeah. to continue <laughs> serving in some other way? Um, yeah, n- no political aspirations at all. I, I continue to look to find ways that I, I can make a difference. Um, and, um, you know, Idaho is a great place to do that. Again, I, as I mentioned, um, very interested in conservation issues. Yeah. Um, through family, you know, I'm on the board of directors for uh, the Mo- Montgomery Botanical Center, which is down in Florida, which is – yeah, essentially like a zoo for exotic plants and stuff. Oh, really? And, and at first I was like, okay, you know, this is interesting. But I've learned so much just from, from that, from a business perspective, but also as something giving back. I had no idea you were and, an amateur botanist. Uh, yeah. I, wow. Um, and then out here it's looking at, um, uh, you know, I've talked before about, you know, how to use fly fishing and other outdoors mm-hmm. activities um, for activities-based therapy. And um that's one of the things, especially I've learned through my wife as an occupational therapist, is how important it is for whether it be veterans or challenged athletes or, or anybody really yeah. to have activities that um, that bring energy and where again you gain sense of, sense of purpose for it. Recharge the soul. Um, yeah, and um, 
so again, quick funny army stories. Like, yeah, my wife was a jump master before I was. Oh, and, nice. Yeah, yeah. So imagine being a, a young second lieutenant in the eighty <laughs> second Airborne Division. You 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 get a lot of grief for not being a jump master yet. Indeed. And uh, so there I am at, at, at you know my last day at jump master school in JMPI and. You know, I've got one shot left to pass. And so I, I kind of like harnessed my chi and I was like, one dear God, please, for the sake of my marriage, let me, you know, make it through gym master school. <laughs> um, but two, it was like, how do you find, you know, inner peace and calm? And I went back to a stream where it's like the ultimate fly fishing day up in northern Idaho and Kelly Creek. And, uh, and you know, you, you kind of harness your, your chi and you, you go to your little Zen moment and went through in a past jump master school and, so those sorts of things, to me, those are like those little nuggets where it's like, you know, like there's something there. Um, and uh, so I look forward to like, how do I continue to make a difference? Um, you know, I've got some ideas we've talked about here. I won't go into it too, in too depth, but how do we take the, the gifts that we have, whether it be mm. the experiences we have from our, our careers and previous uh, service to opportunities where we can make a difference for other folks in the future? Well, you talked a lot about mentorship, but we've talked a lot about that. I mean, um, thank you for sharing all this time and advice with the people that happen to be listening or watching. But are you interested in being a mentor for somebody that could hear this and say, like, I want to cold call, cold call this person? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, and um, the funny thing is, yeah, as I'm getting ready to, uh, to leave Fort Liberty, formerly Fort Bragg, is yeah. how many people are like, hey, I've heard Idaho is pretty good. And like, well, let me tell you, here's a sticker. <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm a little bit of an apostle. Uh, there's USOs and airports across the United States. We've got Mission 43 stickers on them, so <laughs> I, I'm, I'm spreading the word. Well, we appreciate you taking the time again, Justin, and thank you so much for all you've done for our country and all you're going to continue to do for our great Idaho community here, man. Thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks. Appreciate it. Thanks for joining us for the Mission 43 podcast. We hope you found it informative and helpful. If you have any questions or feedback, please comment below or email podcast at mission43.org. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our podcast to stay up to date with new episodes. Be proud of your service, not defined by it. See you next time.